Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In this video, we are going to talk about the second part of the precision handling. We are going to talk about the tip to tip and pad to side grip. Okay, so let's get started. So today we are going to first talk about the tip to tip and then we will move on to the side to pad. Under tip to tip what we need to know is it is very similar to your pad to pad. You can see over here this is the pad to pad right and at the bottom you can see this is tip to tip and they are very similar. The only difference that is notable over here in this picture is there is more flexion at the IP joints and the second difference is the ulnar deviation at MCP which cannot be seen. So that is about what I mentioned here. There are two prerequisites at the tip to tip. First is greater flexion than pad to pad. And because of that greater flexion, your flexor digitorum profundus works more. And the second one is at first MCP, adduction is seen because of the ulnar deviation and the finger pointed radially. And at other MCP, abduction is seen, although it is in ulnar deviation. Now, what does this mean? Let me explain. So if you take a tip to tip grip you can see the fingers are ulnarly deviated correct the mcp joints so if you see the finger is going inward so this is abduction and this is adduction right so for first mcp over here right first mcp this would mean adduction correct because it's going inward but for other two mcp going in this direction means abduction correct so this is abduction this is adduction so that's how there is ulnar deviation and more flexion seen at the tip to tip precision handling and that's the major point that we need to notice. Apart from that, the movement is almost similar, just increased flexion and because of that, there is slight muscle activity difference that is seen. Let's have a look at that. So at the muscle activity, it is very similar to your pad to pad. The only difference is flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus. These two muscles show more activity because of the increased flexion, right? Greater flexion at the IP joint and uh, the IP joint of the thumb. And also there is more interosseal activity that is required at this type of grip. That's all we have for our precision handling tip to tip. Now let's move on to pad to side grip. Now under pad to side grip, again, there is not a lot to cover. First thing what you need to understand is what's the other name. It's also called as the key grip or lateral pinch and over here compared to other grips the thumb is more adducted and less in rotation see if you notice in other grips what was happening the thumb was undergoing some amount of rotation right there was this opponent's movement that was uh, done by the thumb right that was a major part of it but over here in pinch grip there is no opponents the thumb just adducts and flexes really hard so that it can hold and it's one of the easiest grip and it can be also seen in people who are paralyzed like someone who doesn't have any activity of your finger flexors what will happen is the extensors right the wrist extensors will work and they'll pull the hand up and because of the passive tension that is present in your flexors right the flexors will have passive tension present so as extension happens the flexors will automatically pull and you will get this grip of pinch grip just with your wrist muscle activity right so that's what i mentioned over here let's have a look at that so as i mentioned it's the least precise and it can be performed by people with paralysis and it just needs active wrist extension apart from that another small point that we need to notice is when we hold this grip the wrist aligns so you can see wrist over here aligns itself with the thumb see it's in the same line ease in aligning the key when you are putting it in a lock so imagine you are putting the key inside the lock and then rotating, right? So that force of rotation has to happen very efficiently. The transfer of force has to happen very efficiently. And this can happen only when the whole wrist and your thumb, everything is aligned. And that's what is seen in your pad to side grip or the key grip. So again, let's come to the point what I mentioned over here that just with wrist extension, this grip is possible. So this whole phenomenon is called a stenodesis where what happens is the tendons have a good amount of flexibility as well as stiffness to allow this to happen. So first movement is active wrist extension 
and because of this active wrist extension this movement of extension uses passive tension of the extrinsic finger flexors and because of the extrinsic finger flexor passive tension there is finger flexion seen when the wrist is extending and as the wrist is flexing that is active extensors are not working anymore and as it is going into passive flexion this passive flexion allows the flexor tendons to relax and open up the fingers and that allows you to release the grip right or open up the hand so finger flexion is possible with activity of your wrist extensor and help of passive tension in finger flexors and the opening of the grip is possible because of the passive flexion at the wrist as the wrist goes into flexion the tension on the tendons is released and the fingers open up so another example of this can be a cylindrical grip too even a cylindrical grip can be generated if there is enough tension in your flexors but it's not too much that it does not let you open the fingers right so the tension in your finger flexors extrinsic finger flexors which are not working has to be just optimal so that when you do an extension these tendons pull your fingers together and you get a cylindrical or a pinch grip whatever you want and then as you relax it as you relax these extensors the finger flexors are not too tight that your hand just keeps closed right it will open up because they are loose enough but as you extend they'll even close so that exact tension in your tendons can allow you to have a grip even without well functioning flexors right obviously this grip won't be as strong as your other grips but still it's possible to have these grips in spite of having paralysis of finger flexors right so let's quickly summarize this topic so first we had a look at the tip to tip grip where there were prerequisites of finger flexion extra finger flexion in the tip to tip and also there was ulnar deviation which was seen along with the ip joint pointing radially towards the thumb as you can see over here then we also saw there is muscle activity which is very similar except the fdp and fpl which is working more because of the increased flexion next we went to the pad to side where we saw that it is a very easy grip right it is least precise and it can be achieved even when there is no finger flexor working that is through tenodesis that is the flexor tendons have enough stiffness to create flexion and as the wrist goes into flexion they are not that stiff to keep the fingers close they slowly open up and this grip as well as cylindrical grip can be achieved through this process right so with that we finish off this topic in next video i'll cover the last part of our hand biomechanics thank you for watching